Well, this is January 18th, 2019. We're in Bedford, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Libraries Continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Jim Ramsey. Our camera person is Maureen Sullivan. And we're very privileged to have with us today uh, Arthur Robert Kovacs. Welcome, Arthur. Thank you, James. And You're Maureen. welcome. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. May I ask when you were born? November 11th, 1949. Armistice Day. Armistice Day. That is great. Maureen pointed that out to me. I hadn't realized that. You said she's sharp. I didn't realize she was that sharp. She is. And where were you born? Poughkeepsie, New York. Poughkeepsie. Great. And did you grow up in Poughkeepsie? Not at all. Not at all. Um, where where did you uh, close by? Wappingers well, Falls, New York. Wappingers Falls, New York. Okay, okay. It's about. It's been a long time. I guess about 15 miles from Poughkeepsie, but it's another okay. world. And how long were you? I mean, did you basically grow up? I mean, go through school in Wappingers Falls? I was one of the lucky. I consider myself one of the lucky ones. Uh, but IBM, International Business Machines, and Texaco were big companies there, and they're forever transferring their poor employees and my buddies in the school. They used to translate their acronym uh, IBM with I've been moved. I've <laughs> moved. So was your father working for IBM? Oh, hell no. He was working for the state of New York as a prison guard. As a prison guard? I see. So, but did you go, were you, were you in the schools, public schools, say, in Wappingers Falls? Oh, yes, and they were excellent schools because of the uh, IBM in Texaco. I, they I made get sure it. they... I got uh, it. Yeah. So did you go, say, through high school in Wappingers Falls? All the way, Falls? well, let's see, what, yes and no. In high school, in junior high, I went to Wappingers Falls. Before that, they had, like, Fishkill, New York, and okay. near, very nearby. Close nearby schools. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So your family was there. Your father was a prison guard. That's uh, correct, sir. Did you have? Do you have? Or did you have at the time brothers and sisters? Oh, my dear sister Patsy. Uh, God bless her. I, I miss her so much. Uh, Jesus Christ. It's, she's known me uh, eight years more than I've been alive, and I've been alive for sixty-nine years, and. Uh, we still keep a close contact, almost daily contact. And she drives me nuts sometimes. I drive her nuts sometimes. But, but what is her name again? Patsy? Yeah. That's great. That's great that you're still close. And is she still, is she close by or does she live in? I wish, I wish. She's in Poughkeepsie. She's in Poughkeepsie? Right. Okay. And you went to public schools, uh, either in different places, but close to Wappingers Falls. Yeah, actually, now that you mention it, uh, the question you were asking was through 12th grade, but also U University of Buffalo was a public school, and I, I went there for two years after. Uh, I after so you went, after you finished uh, high school, you went then to the University of Buffalo? I wanted to get as far away from home as possible on a scholarship that you had to use in New York. In the state, I couldn't afford too much. Uh, so I chose the University of Buffalo, its cheapest tuition versus. So what did you study at the University of Buffalo? Good old engineering, civil engineering. Civil engineering? Yes, sir. So you learned how to build bridges and uh, blow them up, water blow up works? The other, and not, 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 I never blew one up, but. Uh, how to put them up and hopefully keep them up. Keep them standing. Good, good. Coincidentally, that's my background too. So, well, welcome aboard, stranger. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so okay, so you went there for two years. Yeah. Uh, now Buffalo, Buffalo is quite a ways from Wappingers Falls, right? I'm guessing it's about five hours away. So you got away from home. Yeah. And then after the two years, did did you did did you consider staying in college, or did you why why did you what did you do after that? After college, I went to, to uh, work in the public health service during the summers, and uh, 
the first summer after the second year out, this is a little confusing, I hope I say it right. After the first two years, I got an appointment in the public health service, like military ROTC, but it was Coast Step, Commissioned Office Students. Commissioned Officer Student Extern Training Program in the Public Health Service. Oh, so in, went, in the Public Health Service? Yeah, for the Indian Division. It's civil engineering, what else? Uh, water and sewage projects. And um, then uh, my five month tour of duty was up, that's all I could be in it. And, uh, so I, uh, I knew what the, the draft board wouldn't give me a deferment so beyond the one I already had in the first place. So uh, I. An engineer friend of mine said, "Would you like to work in uh, Haiti as a mission missionary?" I said, "Okay, I'll try it." And, uh, I went as there. a missionary. Did you say? Yeah, but it was sort of a funny thing. It wasn't. It wasn't a little bit, of, quite a bit actually, more than I wanted. Uh, a bit of re religious ministry, but they had a lot. They had. They were building a. He particularly was building a water dam and hydraulic dam and. Uh, Oh. So, during the rainy season, I suppose you could get in and out somehow, but basically you were sealed in for the rest of the island and uh, no doctors stayed or came in, so somebody had to play doctor and pharmacist. I could read and write in English, I could look, look at the uh, handbooks. I didn't like it, it was too much responsibility. And this was where? Haiti? Yeah. Oh, I see. So you were there for... Very, very short period of time, and there, I, uh, there was a nun there that said, what in the hell are you, she said it nicer, but not much nicer. <laughs> she said, what in the hell are you doing here? Why aren't you, uh, uh, and when the Navy, like my nephews, and so she wasn't supporting that idea of me being a medical missionary, so. A medical missionary, okay. Yeah. But, but she wasn't supporting it, and you decided. No way was she supporting it. She was saying, go, go Navy. So um, Navy, okay. So, had you had you had a deferment from the draft oh, while you were you. doing this? The for the public health service. Yes, uh, I had an off. I I had an offer from public. From, wait, I'm getting mixed up here. I had an offer from my draft board at Poughkeepsie to get a medical deferment, med medical missionary deferment, but I declined because I'd have to be there six years. And uh, after, under the circumstances, I didn't. I thought that was outrageous. So, okay. So you came back. Oh uh, yes. From uh, from Haiti, and then yeah. so then d did you go? You went f right from there into the. Oh military? no 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 no! I went to. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, where was it? Denver, Colorado, near Boulder University. I, I did some civil engineering out there, and uh, or helped the civil engineer, and uh, I did that in Atlanta, Georgia, for a while. And finally, my draft board was saying, "No more fooling around. We want your bod, kids." So uh, I went to Buffalo, flew back. I, I had gotten engaged to a girl in New Mexico. She was part Indian too, actually, whatever mm -hmm. that's worth. But. Uh, when I got my draft notice, I, I flew, I flew for induction notice in the morning. Anyhow, I flew from Buffalo to Albuquerque. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. From Buffalo to Albuquerque, and then, uh, uh, then Albuquerque to Buffalo to, to set my. I didn't want to prolong it any longer. I'd had enough of both. So. so you finally came back and were uh, inducted. There you go, Buffalo, where else? Where else but good old Buffalo. <laughs> hey, Buffalo. And when, so when were you inducted? For September 1970. 1970, and into the, I guess, by definition, you were drafted into the Army. Oh, yeah. Did you, did you consider going into some other ser some other branch of the service or is the army what what you wanted to do i considered other branches of the service but uh mostly i wanted to get my time over with it that, that may have been a big mistake too but uh, i did and that's what my my it, it, movement was to go to the, let the army take me and not fart, fart around with it
That's great. So, for September 1970, you were inducted into the Army in yeah. Buffalo. Yeah. And uh, this was still, uh, well, let's see, I guess the American involvement in Vietnam was winding down some. Yeah. Uh, but you were obviously aware of the Vietnam War, right? Of course. Were other mm, were other friends of yours or relatives uh, going into the service at the same time, or my cousins had gone. The one that she was, was like her. Wait a minute. My cousin went into the Navy, and uh, I, I lost track of what he did. But, uh, but uh, when I went in the infantry in Fort Ord, uh, I, I kept track of those guys, and uh, I didn't feel too cool when they got shot. I really didn't. So. You didn't feel too cool when some of them got shot. Got the some of your fr your rel or friends or re relatives. New, new friends, army friends, right? Army buddies, right? So, uh, and by the way, I forgot to ask you. You you currently live uh, here at the Bedford VA uh, hospital. That's quite correct, right? Jim. In the long term care. Uh, part of the hospital. That's correct, sir. Where, where did you live uh, just before you came here? Uh, a great deal of time was Beverly Mass with my dear wife. and uh, After she passed away, I finally moved into a group home. And it was, wasn't perfect, but it wasn't lonely like living in the house with one dog. Uh, right. And it was getting expensive. In, in, in Beverly? Yeah, it was expensive repairing the damn thing. Right, right. And how long did you? How long were you in the group home? About two years. Okay, and then you came here. That's great, sir. Okay, okay. And do you have children? I have four of them by my wife's previous marriage, and a grandson. You have four children and a grandson. Yeah. And your children are are any of them close by? One will be uh, for sure. Period of time. He's weird. He travels all over the place. He finally decided to retire to uh, uh, Las Vegas. He bought a place in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, he and his girlfriend live out there, and uh, he, he's going to be staying. They are going to be staying with her daughter in their big house for. The, it gets a little confusing to me, but. Uh, it's like the snowbirds in Florida and uh, uh, here, uh, or Canada, to from here to, to anywhere it's cold to Florida for the winter and uh, back. It's, it sort of works out the same with Nevada. Right. Yes. And your grandchild is—is uh, is that a boy or a girl? Well, he's kind of a man now, but but he's oh. he, James is James. James is James. And how old is James? About. About twenty-two. Great. 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 Well, so, sorry for the backtracking, but I wanted to get that some of those facts in. Uh, okay, so you were drafted in Buffalo. Where you went to basic training? I and for somebody spelled the Dix wrong. Huh? Right. I did that. I did that myself for a while. But Fort Dix, New Jersey. It's I'm not even sure if they closed it down. Or not, but the, you know, I don't know. I think it may still be operating operational. I don't know if I want to go back and visit. I'll tell you, but. So how long were you? Uh, how long were you there? Uh, for Probably about ten weeks. That's about what the basic training was. Okay. And, then and how did how 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 did basic go? It's kind of boring. It's just uh, nerve wracking, not knowing where you're going after that. After where you'd be assigned. Yeah. So was it physic? Was it very f physically demanding, or were you? A little bit, but I was in pretty good shape in the first place. Uh, I wasn't like this. I, I was more like you. 20 years younger, 40 years younger. Right. Even more younger than that, in my case. <laughs> um, okay, so you got through basic training. Uh, you met some guys. Uh, and so after basic, so after the 10 weeks or so, did, did you get orders to go someplace? Or did I you went go to further to go training? To, or what? Well, it's a Fort Ord. In California for uh, infantry training, mortarmen. Ah, now let's 
you say mortarmen. So that's yeah. somebody who operates a mortar to fire mortars. It's a t if I'm not mistaken, it's two or three men for a team. Two or three, a team of two or three trained to fire, who, who know how to fire a mortar. They better know if they want to live. <laughs> but you have to know how to aim it and uh, yeah. set it and all that. And how, uh, so how much of that training did you? I got to extremely little of it. That's why I wasn't sure how many men. Uh, I, I rapidly found a way to get uh, uh, transferred to clerk school instead of mortarman training. I see. So, so the mor uh, where where was the mortarman training? Fort Ord, California. Fort Ord. And how, how did you? Why did they send you to mortarman training in the first place? They need. They needed uh, mortarman. I, I hate to say it, but, and you said it for me, but to, to embarrass neither of us, they need. They are, you can't figure the army out. They decide you're a mortarman, you're a mortarman. So it wasn't your choice? No. But after a little bit of it, you decided that you didn't much, you wanted something else. You got it. So you went to clerk training? Yeah. Did, did, did you ask for clerk training or did they? I, I honestly don't remember. I'm pretty sure I, I, I tracked it down, but uh, that was in, Let's see, how many years ago was that? Jeez. Well, it was 19, uh, what was it? What did we say? Well, I'm, I was 20 and I'm 70. Almost 50 years ago. Yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, almost 50 years ago now. A long time ago. You can be forgiven if you don't remember. Thank you, my child. <laughs> all the details. Uh, so, so, you, so, so how long were you in Fort Ord altogether? Another couple of months or so? or? I guess it was probably at least the 10 weeks, but it's roughly the time of basic training for that type of thing. Right. Or advanced training. But. So you spent most of the time training to be a clerk. Yeah. And what, so what does the clerk do? I mean, what's, uh, how would you describe the duties of a clerk? Um, my limited exposure to clerk school and clerk, clerk jobs was, uh, Take care of the typing and then the uh, filing and the uh, administrative work for the general and colonels and captains and sergeants. So basically administrative work, basically, typing, yeah. filing, uh, that sort of thing. And were there, a, were there a number of people going through clerk school at the time that you uh, did it? How many? I'm not sure. I, I didn't get the whole picture of Fort Ord or, the, or the, certainly the Army. I didn't get the whole picture, but it was kind of a funny thing because somehow or other, they probably would have kicked you out or, or done something to you if you didn't do something, but uh, it was in packets before the computer age, and uh, you, there were modules, I guess you'd call them, of, of this is the basic skill. When you've passed that, yep. You go on to the next one. When you pass all of them, you go on to that, the big wild world of army dumb. So you obviously passed all the hurdles. And are, are, were you a good typist? Hell no, most of the guys were. So were you hunt, I mean, hunt this kind I of typing? I wasn't that bad. Just or like this type kind of typing? In between. Good, good, good. So you, so... So between basic training in Fort Dix and clerk training in Fort Ord, it sounds like that may have taken maybe four months. Sounds about right. Of all that training. And so that would have brought you to uh, something like February 1971. Yeah. Uh, just starting with September 1970. Uh. So you finished clerk training and what then? What then? Uh, not too long or thereafter, I was sent to uh, Germany and uh, went, went to, ne first I went to Nellingen, Germany. Pain in the ass that was. And that's Nellingen? Yeah, really. In, uh -huh. uh, middle of nowhere, it's absolute middle of nowhere. And uh, uh, I, the guy, that I was supposed to be replaced there. I could read, write, and type, which are major assets in the, in the army. 
uh, they started putting me in training to be the uh, com company legal clerk in uh, uh, Oh, so a company l legal clerk. Yeah, so, and the guy I was replacing said, Art, you do not want to be here. Just write to your congressman right now and tell him you could do the country more good, do the army more good and the headquarters for Europe. And by golly, that was the best movement I ever made in the army. So Nellingen was not the place you wanted to be. No way, nobody wants to be in Nellingen. Because it was so remote or something, or? Well, it, it, you very, that was the biggest part of it. What, was ha what, 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 act what army activity was happening in Nellingen? What's interesting you say that, uh, I think, I know when I filled out the papers for the draft board and the induction center, they asked, you know, what experiences you had, what, what languages you spoke. And I, I, I wrote, I had an engineering background. I think they put me down because I was an engineer for the, the engineering thing out of New, New Germany, out of Nelligan, and then Frankfurt. And so what I were, did had absolutely nothing to do with engineering. So, but was this the Army engineers? Is that what you're saying? Basically, yeah. So that's what, that was the, the Army, the part of the Army that you were assigned to. Yeah. As a clerk, and exactly. at Nellingen, then you were trained not only as a clerk, but as a legal clerk. That's correct, sir. And so, how, how much training, was that another, like a few weeks of training? Oh, quite a while. I, I, the, the guy I was replacing had a heart attack, and uh, he, they, he uh, I wasn't replacing him, I was out substituting, the big difference. He was a double dipping colonel, and I was just a private. So, uh, someone had to do uh, You'll understand this in a second. There's a lot of contract law with Germans doing the work. Contract uh, law? Yeah. Like, uh, like construction contracting? And yeah, that sort right, of right. So okay. uh, I worked with them and with people in funny green uniforms. And uh, the, the um, well, you, you'd mentioned like who, uh, how good a typist was. I said, guys aren't good typists. That colonel I had, that double dipper colonel, he had the greatest secretary in the world, a civilian all the way. He was married to a GI down the block in the, uh, Frankfurt area, and uh, uh, so uh, let's see. There's another part of the question you asked. Yeah. Oh, how long was I trained? Yeah, big deal. I was always on the job training. I think because right. Okay, so you're always learning. Yeah. So I forgot to ask you when when you were when you signed on to the army. What obligation were you signing? Uh, ob committing to. I don't think I signed up for it. I think they signed me up, but well, in any event, it was two, two years automatic. Two years automatic. That was your, your time. So, so, but you said you left Nellingen to go to Frankfurt? That's correct, because sir. Because that was, what was that, the headquarters of the... Of Europe Engineering Command. Of the Europe Engineering Command of the Army. Yeah. Okay. And that, so... Uh, so by then, maybe it was the spring of 1971 or something like that. Um, I mean, maybe you I'd were... I'd have to sit down with a piece of paper and pencil no, I understand. <laughs> and it really doesn't. But, but you were in Nellingen for a relatively short time. I had to be, otherwise I'd be stuck there. Right, That's what so the clerk, that was the legal clerk telling me, Art, you've got to get out of here. You're going to be stuck here. You're going to do something fast. Well, it strikes me, it's interesting. I, from what you've said so far, there have been two instances where you've kind of used your own decision making to kind of change what the army had led you to. First, a mortarman, and you decided you'd rather do something else, so you got into being a clerk. And then they sent you to N Nellingen, and you requested a change to Frankfurt. So you were, you know, you were kind of trying to carve your own path. I had a lot of help from the public health service too, because I spent five months there in my equivalent of ROTC assignment. And you learn, it was a uniform service and uh, no guns, but uh, you learn an awful lot about bureaucracy. And uh, huh. so 
in some ways it helped me no end when I got stuck in the so army. So this was the public health service right at, after uh, school. Right on. Right. And, and that really was like being in the service, only it was the public, it wasn't the, the, well, the army, it was the public health service. Hmm. Well, well, good for you. Oh, it's interesting, I'll make this a short one. My buddy that got me into it, in it for University of Buffalo, you know, double, double duty, he was working as an executive at Buffalo and also a high ranking officer in the uh, public health public service. Health service. He, uh, let's see, I'm getting a loss here. But, uh, what did I say just a second ago? Your buddy who uh, we were talking about. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to say, yeah. Uh, sorry. It's all right. Well, it's I'll take a minute. He said that um, uh, you, he was in the reserve, active reserves when they felt like having him. And one assignment he had stateside pretty much civilian, but for a short period of time he went on to active duty. He, he said, the, the nature of the public health service is you can be attached to any service. I assume that meant army too. I never really tracked it down, but. I, you mean you can be attached to the army, but still be uh, in certainly the public the, health? Certainly the Navy, and I, I'm guessing strongly the army too. Huh. That's interesting, and most people don't probably well, don't really understand. I, I really don't say much anything about the public health service. The public health service. The, half the people in the world don't even know what the f it is. Right, 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 right. Okay, so you went from Nellingen to Frankfurt. Yeah. And you were. Uh, um, what did you do in front? So you were a le legal clerk right. by then working on, uh, I guess, construction contracts. Uh, Frankfurt was the headquarters. Now, I take that back. My job wasn't so much to do construction contracting at all. My, my, that's what the civilians were there for. My, oh, bo was my boss was there, but I, I don't even know. I knew one project, did one thing. The only thing I know is the guys that were serving in the public health service there, if they, public health, the army there, if they screwed up, I had to unfortunately screw them too. Okay, but but so you you weren't working on construction contracts. No, 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 not at all. Some other kind of legal uh, stuff. Yeah, it's sort of like I don't know. If it's not a good analogy. I better not. It's not a good analogy. I'll say it. Let's say you were a regular paid employee here. And uh, you, you did library work, and somebody supervised legal, legal. I bet, I'm getting mixed up. Let's go on to the next point. That's okay. That's fine. So anyway, you were uh, so when you got to Frankfurt, what was your rank? Well, that was interesting. This is going to sound weird, but I don't totally know because uh, on the papers from from uh, Buffalo, it said E1. But if you had prior service, you automatically got a stri extra stripe. So I actually was E2 and was paid retroactive for E2. But uh, so I, somewhere rather rapidly, I was made an E3 and then an E4. And uh, if I stayed in another month or two, I probably would have got this, almost had to get the sergeant stripes. So you, so E4, was what you Less, yeah, were yeah. and what and what what's the word? Seventy one Delta twenty legal clerk. I'm sorry. What? Okay. The army has military occupational skills. Okay. And my skill was seventy one Delta twenty. I think seventy one. Seventy one Delta twenty. Yeah, I, I think I think that was your specialization. I think my just clerk in general is seventy one Bravo twenty, but it's been a long time. I'm not totally sure. Okay. Okay, and you were an E4. Yes, sir. And is that? Forgive my lack of knowledge of what that's. Is that like a corporal or? Uh, it's like one. Or one a special a spec. It's a spec. There you go. A spec four. So you were a spec four. Yeah. Specializing in the legal clerk. Okay. Okay. 
And so you worked, uh, you were doing legal work in the headquarters. Yeah. So who did you report to? Well, I reported to... I mean, who was your immediate uh, supervisor or commanding officer or whatever? That is a tough question because when my boss went in the hospital, I was, I, I was assigned to get help from captains in the uh, legal court down the street. It wasn't our command directly at all. And also, I worked for the command sergeant major. And the I command for, sergeant major. And, wow. Uh, and, the, and the regular sergeant. It, it, most of the time, people didn't bother me, which was fine with me. So you, were pretty, you had a lot of independence? Yeah. But you said you got a couple of captains, legal corps captains, to yeah, help right. you out or to yeah. or work with you? In other you. words, if there was something that came in I didn't understand doing, which was a lot, I had, I had them help me and then I presented to the general. To the general? and Brigadier General, at all tell you. Was the Brigadier, he was the one in charge? Oh, he the, was super in charge. I mean, wow. Of the engineers? Or so that's the, another, uh, the, the, I, I don't t at this point, I don't, t I don't think I ever really did totally understand how far his scope went. I know he was high ranking in one of the European commands. Now, if there was another one, I'm not totally aware of it. Okay, okay. So what did you think of Frankfurt? Itself. It was okay, but I'm uh, uh, sure be, now they can, I could walk to the international train stations, and I, I often did. And uh, if I wanted to go to the zoo, I could walk to the zoo, and I swapped my English skills or German skills with one of the students at the university there. And, uh, oh, so you learned German? Some. Tiny bit. Enough to get along. Enough to get along. Did the did the German citizens? No English much, or? Jeez, that's a big question. I'm not totally sure. Okay, okay, okay. Did so? Did you have much interaction with the German, with Germans? Well, that's a, well, I did with the guys that worked in. The, uh, well, one guy was from India, which isn't quite German, of course. One guy was from Italy, and finally they sent somebody to replace my boss. Greenberg, I think his name was Green or Greenberg, and uh, uh, so, so, so what, what was that? But like German? I just uh, about oh, the oh German. Much contact. I had very little contact with. Him. I was in the damn green uniform all the time, and right. I worked. My my peers were in the military, right. and I ate with the military and slept with the military. The works. There you go. It was a military uh, I was not a, assignment, actually, of course. I was not a tourist. I, I wish I was, but... Uh, well, plus this was only uh, <clears throat> 1971, so this was only 25 or 26 years after the end of World War II. Okay. So I'm sure that World War II was still pretty fresh. Uh, well, I, actually, a German cafe I went to in the town I first mentioned, Beverly, I, uh, she said, why the hell did they have to bomb a civilian city? She said, he, they killed my brother. Huh. Now, this was a German cafe in... Again, Frankfurt, in Beverly, Mass. In Beverly, Mass. So this was a German... You asked him why he now, had... She, and she said why. Oh. I'm not sure why he came up, but uh, she, uh, she said, What's the city we bombed that uh, was civilian? Dresden or something? Dresden. Firebomb or something like that. Dresden. So she said, well, why the hell they had to kill my brother? Oh. Yep. Yep. So it was fresh still. World War II. Yep. Yep. So you uh, were there for uh, some period. Uh, you had a... <clears throat> You had a two-year obligation, which meant you were obligated, or I mean, you would basically be discharged in September of 1972. Uh, so is that when you, so what happened there? Well, as you said yourself, the Vietnam War was winding down. Well, around the time you were talking about, about the, for discharge, 
nor normal discharge would be 72. But uh, the truth of the matter is uh, everybody that wasn't signing up for more time for career soldier, they had to take five months early outs. And I decided I did not want to stay in the damn army for another five months or five years or 10 years. So I, I, I took it early out and stayed, stayed on in Europe for a while. So if you did, if you did not elect to, uh, to, to re-up or, or, or enlist for longer, you had to take the five month early out? Best of my understanding. Yeah, that, that's, that sounds like I just wanted to be sure. So, well, that must have been actually, was that good news for you? Uh, I, I, I told you once that uh, I, I sent away for the West Point catalog way, way back in high school, and I, it was a strange period of time, as you know, uh, in the 60s, and uh, uh, the war, I was in engineering, as you know, and uh, the engineering part of the campus was straight as an arrow, <laughs> the University of Buffalo, other places too, I'm sure. <clears throat> and, uh, but other parts of the campus were in a riot. Uh, oh, because of the, all the protests and all no. that? So, uh, uh, wow, and this was, this was so, so you were there while all that was going on, which must have, have influenced. <laughs> also, too, speaking of religious people, uh, I, I was introduced to a priest in basically Poughkeepsie, and he was against wars, and uh, he he uh, talked me to believe your conscious objector status was the way to go, and uh, I even went to a, 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 a protest camp or something like that, mm. uh, farm. Uh, this was while, was this while you were in high school? Certainly by college, if not before, uh, and uh, Everybody there was against the war. I, I read, it was some famous woman, Doris Day. I forget which one it was, but anyhow, so n nobody was really gung ho about military then. Uh, it was the opposite. Yeah. So, did you consider becoming a conscientious objector? I applied for it, and I got it in a sense. But uh, no, I got a military missionary deferment, but they would not give me the. Objective status. So the missionary deferment took you to Haiti, but uh, right. I, so I, I must admit, I t later years later, I contacted the priest, and he said, "You could have gone in and be a conscientious objector and just wouldn't carry a gun." I hadn't thought of that. Okay, okay. But you must have known uh, people that you've been in training with and stuff who who did go. I guess people were still being sent to Vietnam. Yeah. When you were in basic, so some of those folks yeah. went there. Yeah. Well, you did your job. You went to jo that's where they told you to go. That's where you went. My buddy at, in Boston, VA, uh, he went to Vietnam, and <laughs> it's not really funny, but it is. He said, "My mother did not make heroes. Did not have heroes." And uh, <laughs> he said, "There's some terrible things I had to do over there, and I, I didn't want to go there." And I, I told him I went to I Arthur Kovacs went to Canada for a while, and uh, he said, "But you came back and did your duty." So you did. That's what you did. You did your duty. Now that you did what you were told to do, which is all really any of us did or could do. So good for you. Thank you for your service. My buddy in your age now, I guess he'd still be uh, Bill Condren in the Manchester VA. He went to Vietnam and uh, he said the CEO, the constant objectors, uh, they didn't have much choice in the matter. Either the guys killed themselves or they fired blanks, not blanks, but fired above the heads or the side of the body. I okay. So conscientious objectors were actually in Vietnam. Yeah. But they were, they were not shooting at people. Some of them had to, they, they'd be either life or death. A, well, they had to, to, in order to save their own lives. Yeah. Wow. It's kind of a screwy situation. I, I didn't actually know, well. Maybe war is screwy, I'm not sure. Maybe war is screwy. Well, um, so you, so you took the early out. Yeah. 
So if it was five months earlier, then that must have been sometime like in the spring of 72. Six April 72. Okay, six April 72. So, so what did you, so um, I think you told me earlier, you had some time. So you uh, did you take some leave at the end? Oh, before I got out, I took my 30 days leave. And one buddy that uh, stationed, I keep saying station worked in the public, I've been in so many bureaucracies, it gets confusing. He was in the damn Peace Corps in India. He said, Art, and Sam, and Harry, you want to go to the city? I said, why not? We said, what the hell? So we got a passport extended as far as size, got all sorts of visas. You didn't need the visas to get there, but if you got stuck, you had to play around with the free the flights to VA. VA, get it mixed up. I don't believe that. The, the, the army had and uh, go, go another way. To the, so I went all the way around the earth, not seeing a whole bunch, but uh, spending a couple hours in Vietnam of all weird things. Oh, uh, on your way to India? On the way back. On the way back, okay. The other way. Like, so you went, uh, let's see, so you, you went to India from Germany. Yeah, right, right. And you went, you, you, you went east to India. Yeah. But then to come back, you went, you kept going east. All there the way you go. The okay, I see. So what did you do in India? We, we rented a Jeep and guide and uh, went tr sight, I, a very sophisticated sightseeing. Uh, really? And how, and we so spent about a week there, about which, a wasn't, week? which wasn't enough. But. So did you, which city was it? I mean, Delhi, in New Delhi. I see. They call them something different now, I think. Well, oh, they have. They've changed the names, and I, uh, I don't remember. Uh, it's funny as hell, though. The banker over at uh, JPVA, uh, Hans. Jamaica River, Plain, right? She. Uh, I was talking to her about India, and she said, "You know more than I do. Uh, it's my own country, and you know more about oh, it." Than she's I, do. Indian, I see. But you traveled. Uh, so. Did you like fly from Germany to India or no? You oh, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. I, after I got out, I took a train from Frankfurt to uh, Turkey on the border of Russia. But, uh, and, uh, but in that 30 days, a rather stupid trip uh, going around the world in 28, 30 days. So in any event, uh, uh, I flew all the way, all those flights. No, no. Okay. So, did you wind up back in Frankfurt? Yes, after? sir. I would have been in big trouble if I didn't. Wow. So you you did a around the world in 28 days. Oh boy, a legend happened. My boss that got recuperated from his heart attack, he said, "Kovacs, you going to Spain for the weekend?" <laughs> <laughs> they, used to, they used to tease me about that. I, I think they thought I did. Yeah. Well, not many people have been around the world, so uh, that's another uh, great experience for you. So, 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 uh, sometime in April, then, or April or May, you, yeah. you, you were, were you discharged in Frankfurt? Uh, so very close, it's pathetic, but uh, it, oh, I see. mean, the airport I'd fly out of would be near, near Frankfurt, not Frankfurt. I, I, I was just, if you. My mouth's a little dry, I'm a little nervous. Uh, if you wanted to at that time, you had a year to use your free ticket, sort of free ticket back to the States. Oh. So I chose to go through uh, Eastern Europe and Turkey, mostly Turkey, and uh, play tourist. And, uh, huh. Yeah. So how long did you about, stay? About five months. And my brother-in-law's family, is Armenian, and if you remember the uh, huh. Turkish massacres of Armenians, they were staying, part of his family was in uh, Istanbul. And I, I got a little homesick, so I went to see his father and mother, my sister's huh. father-in-law and mother-in-law were there visiting, so I went to see him. I, I got homesick, so I said, I'm flying from Istanbul to Frankfurt. The here. So eventually you got home, probably uh, about the time you, 
probably in the fall of 72. Yeah, you got a late admission to the University of Buffalo, where else? Oh, you did? With a permission to take an overload. <laughs> oh, an overload of courses? Yeah. So will you back, plunk yourself back into civil engineering? I did indeed, and a couple other things before I was through, but. So did you complete? No. Your studies I, uh, there, I, or? No, I, I didn't totally complete them anywhere, but the, I came close to it. I ended up with a nice, this, a bad and nice at the same time disability from the VA, and they, the VA is a screen paid me big bucks. My brother-in-law is a businessman. He said, Art, don't blow it and give it away. If you ever get sick again uh, with manic depression, bipolar, uh, you might not get it back and you'll be screwed. So, so you, um, um, so. So what I was trying to say is that sometimes one, one or more therapists here in the States in Boston said, if you go to work, Art, it's not going to look like you're too disabled. And if you don't look disabled, you're not getting those checks. I see. So kind of a catch-22 yeah, really. type of deal. I see. So after you, <clears throat> after you finished your studies at the University of at Buffalo, then did you, where, where did you go from there? Did you eventually come to Massachusetts? Well, I, I didn't totally, I, I how do I say it? Uh, I, I had a bad episode of bipolar, so I went to see my parents in New Hampshire, and uh, I ended up here, out of all places, in Bedford. Here in Bedford? And then uh, my parents died, and I moved on after staying some time in New Hampshire, and I met a woman who uh, was I, I, sort of a side note, but the, her previous husband, husband was uh, deceased and he supplied the four kids. And, with, and uh, in any event, uh, so uh, she, she was living in a town near, near Massachusetts and I was in New Hampshire. We agreed to meet halfway for a while, but it was killing us. So we said, well, let's get married. So, that, so okay. that's how I ended up in Beverly. She wanted to go to an art school in Beverly. Night school. Art school. Art school. I'm, I'm sorry. You Misunderstood. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm not laughing at you. So you got, so, and that's where your four, her children, yeah. her four kids are the ones you mentioned earlier. Right. Got it. So that brought you to Massachusetts. For a long time. Looks like I'm here a little bit longer. I, I don't know, it, it, no one's totally sure what the story is. There's a lot of, if I bust my chops, there's a lot of thought that I can get the hell out of here. I, it, uh, I had my oper back operated twice in the same operation uh, two years ago, one or two years ago, and I've uh, been here ever since. And that, if, you, if I do enough PT and OT and individual, I, should be able to walk at least with a walker, which beats this old machine. And I am walking with a walker, but yeah, I've not, seen, that's I've seen, not uh, I've seen you walking in the hall. Gonna run you over, Chief. <laughs> so, well, I good. So, um, so after you, after your service, or in the time between then and now, have you uh, have you been in touch with any of the men you knew? Uh, in the Army? Uh, the only one I really kept in touch with it was Bob Zuber and the guy from India. Yes. Not from India, but anyhow, uh, I, uh, he said, anytime you want to get a hold of me, Art, just call Elgin, Iowa, and ask for Zuber, and they'll, you'll send a letter to Elgin, Iowa. And I, I, con I contacted him, and he turned out to be in California, where I was in the first place, anyhow. And, uh, uh, I, he, he was near, on the coast, and I can't think of the name of it, it'll come to me. Not today, I'll think, but anyhow, so he lived there, we got together for a meal, and. Oh, you, so you, you met, met up with him? Yeah. Great. Yeah, I must have been longer than that that I met him up, because I remember meeting him at the, uh, not football, what's the other name? Baseball Diamonds. I see. We, yeah. 
Good, good. And how about any veterans organizations? Did you join any of those? Or? I did. DAV, I haven't been active in it, but I, I kept in Disabled touch with, American Veterans. Yeah. Right. Kept in touch with like the gentleman I talked to about right. that. Right, it's, right. We're all in the same boat. Obviously, uh, you're, you're with veterans. Uh, veterans. My wife always, oh. sorry, I mean to point. My wife always said, "Be with the veterans, Art. Be with the veterans." So, that's a pretty good uh, advice. Actually, the, the the doctor from Brockton, where I was recuperating from the uh, surgery, said that uh, I I need to be near veterans, and uh, she said, "Go." And she was for it. I can't exactly complete her accent, but go be with veterans. So here I am. So here you are. Here you are. That brings us right back to today. Bedford. So. <laughs> so. What day is it? What year is it? What, what, right. What, <laughs> where, where am I? Uh, who am I? Let me ask a question, just kind of whimsical. Do you happen to remember your service number? I, I'm getting it mixed up with my ride number, but let me see. Two, four, eight, six. I am getting it mixed up. Uh, okay. I think, I think I just, it's two ten six four eight. That probably is close. I, some of us, I somehow I can't forget mine and others. But anyway, um, so are you? Are you? Are you glad that you served in the military? As you look back on it, was it a? Does it strike you that it was a positive experience? As for your you, life? As usual, you know, I think you're getting to know me well enough that I'm ambivalent about a lot of things. I try to make the best of it, and it's, it's been very helpful at times. And, uh, for whatever it's worth, I'll put a plug in for 2019. Uh, I had short admissions here uh, before 1990 when I got fairly well physically and mentally. Uh, but. Um, way different this time and of course I must be different but maybe the whole structure of VA Bedford is different in it. So you're optimistic for 2019? Yeah. Or Good not for you. A, lot, a little nervous too because I have to do a lot of work. You mean to get the, at least be able to get off the base on my own. To get yourself. Little things to you like big things to me like uh, uh, getting in and out of a car without falling down. Yes. Right. You'd be able to hold, Andrea, the, your partner, my partner, said a whole new world to end up with you. She knows what she's talking about. She's been trained in a whole bunch of areas, and she knows things about me. Medically. This is Andrea. Yay, Andrea. Yep. Yay, Andrea, indeed. She's great. She's great. Um, just a kind of a couple of wrap-up questions. Uh, <clears throat> as you think back on your military service in particular, can is there any particular experience or person um, or event that sticks in your mind that was really memorable that you'd like to share with us? And there doesn't have to be, but if something, if there is something, uh, we'd like to hear it. You know, I've thought about it before with you, with this. I honestly think that 4 September 70 was a big thing. I don't think it was true exactly the way the books work, but on my discharge, my entry papers into the Army, they put my discharge date uh, from the public health. I didn't really discharge with the public health service. I was on leave at 3 September. and. Uh, that forward step, it, it, uh, it not only w it brought me into another world, changed my life in a way nothing else has done. A lot of positive things before, after, and during, but it's, it's been a big event. 4 September 1970. Yes, sir. Well, it was a big day, and you. I remember every step of that day. Do they you get, really? They, uh, uh, huh. they called us in and, and uh, uh, 
there were a lot of people there, and then at the end of the day, there weren't. And they, they gave us, I don't know how you give somebody a leave when they've been in the Army for two hours, but they did. And uh, they gave us meal, meal certificates for the local restaurants. And uh, I said, the hell with it. I got me a steak dinner. So I took my chip and uh, threw in a couple of bucks and I had my steak dinner. And uh, I missed a girl that became my fiance. And later we agreed to meet in Phoenix, halfway between or or, or and uh, Albuquerque. And uh, but that but that day that day for September is pretty much uh, etched on your. Your did, mind. You, did you see me hesitate once about no, it? No, no, no. That, that's one date uh, you absolutely know. Well, thank you very much for your service. Um, thank you very much for this interview, for your time. You uh, did good work in the Army. You've shared that with us. Um, so. Thank you, Arthur Robert Kovacs. Thank you, Jim Rebley.